Hi everybody, this is Tanya Lux and I would like to introduce you to our new clone tinting brushes. I already have an image open here and the first thing that I'm going to do is quick clone this painting by Hao Wang. When I do that, by default, it launches the photo art painting panels for me and we did a quick clone. So that means it's cleared the image off the canvas. I can use tracing paper to toggle that on and off. Now I'd like to take a look at the clone tinting brushes and what I recommend you all do is you kind of step through the brushes to decide which ones you like, how you might want to use the particular brush at hand. So the clone tinting brushes work by mixing the color that you choose from the color wheel along with the source image. So let's choose purple. And if we take a look in the clone color section of the panel here, everything is set up as it should be. And by default, you know, we've set certain amounts for the brushes, but you can certainly change that on your own. So right now I've got a, a splatter tint brush, and this is doing a very subtle, um, bringing in just a tiny bit of the purple, but I've got that splattery effect. I'm using a Wacom Intuo stylus, so the direction that I point the pen in, the splatter is going to go that way and I'm just going to undo. So we'll just kind of run through these brushes here to see which ones we might want to use. Now this is a very bristly brush and once again depending upon the direction that I'm painting that's the direction that the hairs of the, the bristles are going to fall. So if I start moving the stylus in another direction that it will change how it appears on the image. Just experiment to find out which ones you like best. Okay, so that um, brings in a lot of the original image. We're not going to go through all of them, but that's the number one thing that I propose that you all do to see which brushes that you like best. All right, I'm going to undo this. We'll go ahead and close out of that, and I'm going to open the original image again. Now, once we've got her, I'm going to this time instead of quick clone, will clone and that leaves the image on the canvas and I am ready to clone away here. Let's come up and I think the first brush that I'm going to start with is the splatter tint and we'll choose a different color to work with and if I come up to the top corner here the lighter I press the more of the color that I selected in the color wheel comes through and the harder that I press the more it's going to blend with the original source color. You can size your brush up by pressing Control or Command plus Alt and then you click and drag. Now when I go over the signature you can see it's also splattering that as well so I might want to be not so heavy handed there. All right. So now let's come up and some of the brushes that we didn't try in our little test were the soft tint cloner is a very nice subtle brush. So it might be good to use on the lips and I'm going to change them to from red to hot pink. Now you could also insert a layer if you like and paint on the layer because um, if I happen to go out of the lines a little bit too much here then I can just easily erase. I'm not working directly on the source image. All right, now she's got hot pink lips. So let's try with the hair. I'm going to come here and take a look at what brushes. Oily thin bristle. Maybe let's try this on the hair in the corner here. And I'm just going to have a little fun with it maybe start a little bit more on the purple end of the spectrum and I'm just going to keep moving little by little over to the right on the color wheel to subtly change this so we'll do kind of a, a rainbow effect with the hair and I think over on the left here because we already have the blue in the in her clothing Maybe I'll go back to purple. And depending upon my pressure, you know, it kind of comes out pink. Um, so 
That's why you're going to have to you experiment with the brushes. It'll mix the source with the color that you have selected, and you'll get the hang of using these brushes here, maybe a little bit darker. And I'm still working on that layer, which is fine because it might get a little bit tricky with the hairs that are, are coming out on her face here, so I might need to erase a little bit. But if you size the brush appropriately, then you should be okay. All right, cool. Now let's come to her eye and just to make it fun and to make it pop, I'm gonna go green. But I'm gonna go back to the soft tint cloner. I need to make sure I have a fairly small brush here. She's got all kinds of color going on. All right, so now I'm going to just take a look. Um, the hair over here is already somewhat colored. We've got that soft tint cloner still, so let's just do a little bit of a more prominent purple. And once again, I'm gonna shrink down the size of the brush and just hit these little hairs with a little bit of the purple. All right, well, there you have it. We quickly transform this image with all kinds of color. I know this looks crazy, but if we toggle the tracing paper, we'll see there's the original, and here is the newly painted version. And I kind of see in the lips there, I think I got a little bit too aggressive. So if you don't like something that you did, we can always soft clone back in the original subtly. Let me size the brush up just a tiny bit here. Okay, I think that's better. So there you have it. That was my introduction to basic clone tinting. There's one more thing I'd like to show you before I leave, and I'm gonna go back to the clone tinting brushes because there's another option at the very bottom of this panel, multi-point cloning. So if I choose to set the first point with Alt, I'm going to do offset cloning. If I click on the lips, you'll see a little one appear. And then when I move over to wherever I would like to replicate to, I'm gonna press Control or Command Alt and click. And let's size this brush up. So now we can add lips elsewhere. Not that I would want to do this, but this is another thing that you all can have some fun with. You can choose part of the image to place elsewhere within the image, or you could even pull from another document if you like. And there are all kinds of options for transforming the clone version. You could rotate and scale, you can skew it, add perspective. So that's another thing that you can have some fun playing with. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and keep watching for more cloning techniques.